Hello everyone, Rock Abatko here from Masson and MassonSports.com, School of Rock. Sitting with me here, man, needs no introduction, but I'll do it anyway. It's Orioles closer, Zach Britton. Thought we'd have a little fun here today. Talk to Zach about the bullpen, some things maybe you don't know about his fellow relievers, get to know him a little bit better. So, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready to go. We have not rehearsed at all. No, we haven't. We're just going to wing it here. <laughs> uh, first of all, what can you tell us baseball-wise about Brad Brock? That's kind of the way he fits in that bullpen, his contributions, his value. Yeah, I mean, when we first got him, uh, you could see that the talent was there, and then obviously he's come into his own, especially this year. But uh, it goes really back to last year. I think, uh, you know, no one was really talking about him, but he, he did a lot of special things for us down the bullpen, uh, multiple innings, really bridging that gap to Darren and myself. Uh, and he's done a great job of filling in for Darren now that he's been injured. But um, you now he's one of the top guys in the league, and he, for some reason, obviously, he doesn't get the the notoriety like some other guys in our division do, some of those other bullpen pieces. But he he does just as uh, good of a job, and um, you know, I, I think he's going to even get better. I, you, you don't see too many guys with three plus pitches in the bullpen, and he's got pretty much a starter's arsenal down there, which is devastating for hitters, especially when you're facing them one time, maybe two. And anything about him? that you can share with us that maybe the rest of us don't know? I think the funny thing, and we always kind of give him a hard time about it, is how competitive uh, how competitive he is uh, in anything, uh, especially off the field. You get him in golf or really just anything. And, uh, you know, when he doesn't uh, perform well in, in just anything, it could be like the smallest little game that you're playing, um, you know, he, he gets pissed. And it's kind of funny. Um, and we always razz him a little bit for it because he's really competitive. And he'll just kind of turn really red and walk away from you guys. And we know we got him. So uh, that's one thing about him. But that's what's great. He's, he's really quiet. But uh, you can see that competitive fire in him. Mm -hmm. And next, how about Dylan Bundy? What, first of all, just baseball-wise, what's kind of his role and how he fits in? You know, I think this year, I think Buck has talked about it a little bit, has just kind of get him healthy through the season. Um, but I remember when we drafted him, he came to Big League Camp, I want to say as a 19-year-old, 18-year-old, mm -hmm. and uh, the stuff was impressive. And you saw a top of the rotation Big League starter in the future. Starting to see that now again. Everything is kind of coming together for him. I think the velocity has been jumping up. And uh, you talk to some opposing hitters and um, – you know, they're pretty impressed w with him as a young guy right now. And a lot of people ask, is that your Rule 5 guy? We're like, no, this was our top <laughs> pick back in the day. And they're like, oh, this kid's pretty dang good. Uh, and actually, I was having a conversation with Mark Trumbo the other day about Dylan. He remembered uh, watching video on, on him when he first got drafted. I think Mark was in Anaheim. Mm -hmm. And he said uh, this, he looked like a kid that had a, a bright future. So uh, we're excited to have him down the bullpen. And hopefully we don't see him down there next year. Hopefully he's in the rotation. And I think that's, uh, that's where he's going to be. Now, what about something that maybe we don't know about Dylan? Uh, he's our he's our designated hillbilly down there, uh, <laughs> you know, from Oklahoma. So you know, hunting and fishing. Um, yeah, he's just a, a funny guy. He really is. He's got that dry sense of humor, um, but you know, he's uh, he's a big piece to us down there. It keeps everyone loose, and we enjoy having him down there. He said that uh, he thinks it's funny that nobody believes him that he's good at playing chess. They oh, always yeah, think he's right. just a that's hunter right. and fish. I'm like, that. well, you just won a cow milking contest in Anaheim. That's not helping your reputation anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, he, yeah, that's right. Uh, that you mentioned him and Brady and actually Tyler Wilson, they play chess every day, and he's actually really good at chess, uh, which is kind of a random thing to be really good at, I right. think, when you're from Oklahoma. Uh, but, yeah, he's a really good chess player. Right. And Adris Mert Despagne, who I know hasn't been here right. a long time, but what are your thoughts on him? Uh, he's actually really funny. He's opened up, I think, the last few days. I uh, got to know him in spring training, too, so we had that. But, uh, you know, he's a great piece. Sometimes when you get a guy, and uh, especially when, you know, he's maybe doesn't speak as, as good of English as he'd want to at times. Maybe he doesn't feel like he can talk to guys and we're going to understand. But uh, I feel like we have a pretty good group of welcoming guys in, and uh, he's actually really funny, and he's opened up, like I said, the last few days. And uh, he's done a great job for us, um, I think, you know, we watched him come in uh, when I see his first day here and through multiple innings, did a really good job, and he's got some good stuff, can pitch down there. And just another piece, another guy that we can bring up that's going to uh, allow us, our bullpen to be effective. Just the fact that you said he was funny, that's something we yeah. wouldn't know because he has a serious look on his face all the time. He, uh, yeah, I think, I guess the one thing we razzed him about, we're like, how old he is. Uh, we're not sure if him or Dom are older, so uh, that's the one thing we've been uh, kind of giving a hard time about, and he, he, he laughs it off. But he's got a really good sense of humor. Mm -hmm. How about Oliver Drake? Oliver, um, you know, obviously he hasn't been up here that much this right. year, but, uh, I mean, he's dominated the minors the last few years. If you look at his numbers, really good split, and I think the big thing for him was commanding it. Um, 
you know, I tried to talk to him a little bit. I was kind of in the same boat with the sinker. Uh, guys uh, made me throw for strikes when I first got up here. And once you show that you can command, you know, that pitch for me, um, then you can get guys to swing it. And I think he's starting to find his way with that split because uh, it's a really effective weapon for him. And he's, uh, if he can do that, he's going to be a really good bullpen piece. Do you get a lot of like Navy jokes, Top Gun, things like that thrown at him? Yeah, all the time. And I think, uh, you know, we tried to have him have, uh, sing the Navy fight song one time and he, he got stage fright and he forgot <laughs> it. And I had a buddy that went to the Naval Academy and I texted him and said, hey, we got a guy that forgot the Navy fight song. Like, what do you got on that? <laughs> like, How do you forget the Navy fight song? So. That's one thing we always wear him out about was forgetting the Navy fight song when uh, we were on the bus one time. I think we were going to the hotel in Toronto. Are you impressed Michael Givens, the fact that he's only been pitching a few years. He came up as a shortstop professionally, and yet he's made the contribution that he's made. Yeah, it's impressive. It's not an easy thing to do. I think some people think it's it easier than it is, um, especially the lack of experience and then coming up into the big leagues and facing some tough hitters. Our division, I mean, the lineups are pretty deep, so he's done a really, really good job. Um, he may, you know, struggle a little bit here and there, but that's every young pitcher I've been there. Um, but he's a smart guy, and he makes adjustments, and the, the stuff is, is impressive. And uh, like I said, talking to other hitters, again, he's another guy that guys don't enjoy facing. Anything about him we should know about? Uh, he's so quiet. Uh, you know, we don't get on Gibby too much because he, uh, he's got a good feel. You know, whether that's being a position player, he's just got a good feel for things going on in the game. Um, but he's, he's really quiet down there. You know, he's funny, too, when uh, every now and then he'll tell a joke or something. But uh, he mostly just you know kind of sits there and watches the game. He's really quiet. We try to get him to open up a little bit. But uh, you know when we have the bullpen dinners, uh, you know we bring him out there. But he, uh, you know, he stays to himself a lot. But he's, he's still a good guy, and everyone enjoys him. I know he's not here now, but TJ McFarland, how valuable is it to have a guy like that to can consume the innings he does? It seems like he's available the next day or two. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the hardest gig in the bullpen is being the long reliever. Um, because you don't know when you're going to throw, and when you do throw, you're going to have to throw multiple innings. And uh, on our team, we're relying on you to, to allow our, bull, or our offense to get back in the game and obviously save some arms. So it, there's a lot of pressure in that role. I mean, people think that um, it's just kind of like, oh, you can throw anybody in that role, and that's not the case. I think you see it around baseball. Teams have really started uh, building their bullpens, not only around their back end, but obviously you got to get guys – that can get you to the back end. And TJ has allowed us to do that. He's done a really, really good job. And uh, you know, he's another guy I think you know, maybe can have an, uh, a chance in the rotation at some point. We always kind of talk about it. When you, when you look at him throw and the longer he gets into a game, the better he gets. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe he got a, sh a shot to start at some point. I know he's doing it in AAA, right. um, so that's exciting. Does so he get a lot of requests to do his Harry Carey impression? Oh my gosh, he's the funniest guy that we have on the team. Um, <laughs> anything, you know, it's probably because he's from Chicago and he has the accent and we make fun of him a lot, but he uh, he's so funny. Some of the things they can't repeat, but he's really, really funny. And uh, you need that sometimes. It's a long, grueling season. And he's not just making guys laugh in the bullpen. I mean, he's got jokes for Buck when he's you know in the dugout or in the clubhouse. So he's one of those guys you need on the team that uh, keeps everyone loose. Darren O'Day on the DL now. How much you guys miss him? Yeah, it's, it's tough to replace Darren. Like I said, Brad's done a really, really good job. It's... Uh, you know, the hardest thing is, um, you know, when you lose a guy like Darren, I think you you got to – the mistakes, um, it's tough when uh, when you got, have a guy that struggles, you know, um, because you're one guy short on – not the talent or whatnot, but it's just consistently. Darren's done it for a long time. He's been a really good big league reliever for a long time, longer than anybody down there. So he's reliable. And so when you lose a reliable piece, you're kind of leaning on some other people that you're not sure what you're going to get. Um, but we've done a pretty good job, but, um, you know, it's just going to make us better when we can get Darren back. I assume he's also one of the funnier guys. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's witty. Uh -huh. He's definitely witty, uh, keeps you on your toes. Uh, I think he had Dylan doing like a, a word of the day. He had to find a, a long, sophisticated word, and Dylan had to find one and, and repeat it to uh, Darren and then I think spell it uh, every day in spring <laughs> training. So it's kind of funny. He does stuff like that. It's really funny. And also Vance Worley on the DL. Yeah. But how valuable has he been? He's been another guy like TJ. Uh, he's done a great job in long relief for us, bridging that gap. Uh, he started a few games and did really well, so he's kind of a jack of all trades uh, and something that uh, the way our team is uh, constructed right now, we, we need that piece, so hopefully he gets back to us soon. Is it nice to have a guy nicknamed Vanimal around? Yeah, we, did, we asked him if that was self-proclaimed uh, <laughs> nickname or not. I think he said he got it somewhere in the minors or something. Right. But, uh, no, he's, he's awesome. Uh, different personality. Um, and that's what you need down there. 
Um, really, actually, really nice guy. Really quiet in spring. We didn't really know what to right. expect, but uh, he's really funny. He's uh, big into classic cars. And uh, when Mattis was here, him and Mattis were big into the classic cars, so they had something to talk about. But um, a lot of interesting and different personalities down there, and I think that's why what makes our bullpen so good. Mm. He's also a pretty big guy. When he walks through, when he's he just is, in yeah. the cutoff shirt and the shorts, right. like, he's a big dude. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs>